Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and welcome to this video which is some thoughts on StarCraft 2 and in this video I'll be going through why I think StarCraft 2 is an awesome game and what other RTS game makers should learn from it um, both in the ways of general game design as well as pure level design uh, because StarCraft 2 is extremely polished in both of the design aspects and there's really a lot to learn so let's get to it uh, the problems with RTS games these days, like there aren't a lot of them, but the few that I could think of, for instance, comparing to StarCraft 1. Uh, number one here is waiting is not gameplay. And uh, what I mean with this is that just waiting to, uh, for instance, mine minerals or build uh, buildings is not in itself gameplay. Uh, choosing what to spend your minerals on or choosing what to build and where to build it are uh, strategic components but just waiting for uh, something to happen is not really uh, part of the any sort of game mechanics even though sometimes you will still see it um, death ball syndrome and what I mean with this is that the strategy of just staying holed up in your base and building a massive army and then just going through the entire map and then moving on to the next map. Like this strategy is extremely simple but in nearly every game it's just too powerful or um, there is really no reason to move out of your base before you have uh, this death ball. And because you can use the same strategy on every single level the missions become too similar uh, both in the strategy way uh, basically it removes any sort of strategy it's just build stuff win uh, which basically turns the death ball here into number one um, chasing after enemies is just what I wrote uh, because if you played Starcraft 1 there were a few different uh, maps where you had to uh, for instance the one I can remember least fondly is one where you have to chase down 20 scientists or whatever and it, it was basically a maze with tiny holes where people were hiding and big factories and stuff like that and to kill off an enemy in Starcraft 1 you basically had to kill their entire base and since you didn't get any sort of vision from killing uh, the big main structures um, you basically had to keep looking and if you didn't have flying units something like the scientist mission here would become even more uh, challenging or annoying basically because you had to run around corners and look everywhere um, and then there is the extreme linearity which mostly comes from wanting to tell a specific story uh, like I understand the reasoning for it but I still don't think that telling your story is more important than providing a good game um, I'll come back to this uh, because this image here is what StarCraft does well and um, the hub design here is when I'll be talking about the story um, the first thing with StarCraft that it really does well, and I'll bring up my small video here, is the early game. Uh, basically what it does is that it provides you with a handful of units here and there's always something outside uh, that you can find. Like in this case here, the mineral pick pickups. Like I said before, waiting is not gameplay. So at the start of the game you have really few uh, workers mining, so you need to provide other things for the player to do and in this case it's going out and finding these minerals here they will both uh, provide you with scouting and they will um, give extra minerals and the reason why getting extra minerals is better than um, better than having a big base at the beginning is because if you're allowed to build your own base you will know where everything is this is the second mission in the uh, what's it called? Well, the first StarCraft II, uh, Wings of Liberty. And in this case, you will have your six Marines and you will be able to run around scouting. So, this is what you do instead of just waiting. 
you can run around there are no enemies so you learn on this both the first map which is basically only about exploring because you don't even have a base and then the second map which is uh, showing you that at extremely close to your base you're not going to get attacked really so you have some time and here what you're seeing is basically uh, I have the amount of minerals I'm waiting for the supply depot to be built so I'm basically building my second barracks and what you will see down here is that what I'm finding at basically the exact point that I want it to have more production I find an extra barracks so I don't really have to build another one not just that but I find a few more units I find more pickups that will increase my uh, billing even more and I also get extra supply depots so even though it is the first base building uh, level you don't really have to build anything extra if you don't want to if you just move out with your first handful of units here you will get extra production you will get extra minerals and you will not have to wait uh, so fighting is gameplay and in this case you get medics you get more marines and even though you could have built this army in your first base you never have to do it um, so that's my first point the early game so uh, have something to do have small objects or objectives uh, like that have something to do early exclamation mark and underlines and stuff because this is important um, the second point which Starcraft does really well is have unique level mechanics and objectives uh, it's not just the level design here it's actually the game is built uh, from the bottom up with uh, specific mechanics in mind so this lava thing here could never have been made in most games because uh, dynamically changing uh, what is basically a 2D object in most RTS games is just not possible. Uh, but here we have the uh, the first example. I don't really know what order they were because I I have, have saved games. Um, so here what happens is parts of the map becomes closed off because this is the part of the game where you don't have any sort of uh, flying units yet so the mining area is closed off uh, and every other exit out of the base is also uh, turned off because you can't move you can fly with units or fly with buildings I suppose but you really only have your barracks anyway um, it's really weird in my opinion uh, just one thing like this lava eruption thing should probably have been there uh, before the first one um, maybe not because you don't really know what it means until it happens the first time but still uh, and then there are the there you go the reapers which you get at the two minute mark um, basically what this means is that the goal of the uh, this specific map is to gather 7000 minerals so basically what you're doing is just waiting to keep you busy while waiting in this map you have reapers and you have some small amount of zergs that attack you but what the reapers do is that they're mobile while while the lava is up unlike most of the other units like sure you could go up here with marines at this point but the reapers are much faster and they can also jump up and down cliffs to gather minerals faster um, the gather minerals approach to maps is also interesting because it forces you to either build more units and thus wait longer but be safer or not build the units and try to cope with any sort of attacks um, with a smaller army basically um, so keeping this up you're instead of just waiting you can see the minerals are going up in the background but you have your reapers to move around and explore with and you also have a few side missions like in this one it's kill the ultralisk or something megalisk I don't know omegalisk oh, and um, so it's basically things to keep you distracted 
uh, I'm gonna actually move back to this video because there's another point I wanted to make um, since you can land the um, or since you get an extra command center here you don't have to build it again you can build one if you want to but you don't have to because exploring rewards you with extra buildings and the second point is uh, oh it's way down here splitting your attention why is drawing so bad oh well uh, probably I didn't even play that oh well so splitting your attention like I just did here um, means that when the lava becomes dangerous you will have to keep track of both your explorers like the reapers here which will be keeping you busy as well as any sort of command center that you have flown out to a lava area uh, or any army that you have guarding your workers or any sort of thing like that so it's really good thing to split your attention because it forces you to keep track of everything basically which means that you're more likely to make mistakes and this raises the skill cap basically um, yeah this is basically the same point and now I can draw again what do you know so in this map here the unique mechanic is the medivac this is the first mission I think where you get medivacs and how it teaches you to use them is that it's um, your first base is basically an island and up here there were extra units that you could only find by using your medivacs and you have no chance of attacking Kerrigan um, without actually having the medivacs here so in every single way this map is just designed to force you to use the medivacs and it's also laid out in such a way that there are these rivers which are essentially corridors for flying units because the ground-based attack units can't move across the rivers as well as up and down high ground and stuff like that so here is another group of units that you can only save by uh, touching them with your dropships or dropping units on top of them and guess what in the first mission where you learn about the dropships and drops the enemy gets drops as well um, they will be showing up here shortly in the video uh, I'm just building stuff but I know that they will be coming eventually um, oops sorry moved too far uh, yeah okay I moved too far but as you can see here there are spore colonies that stop you from just moving across anywhere but there are still open windows where you'll be taking less damage and here as you can see the drop is starting to move in so you learn that not only can I drop the enemy the enemy can drop me as well and the enemy doesn't have any sort of unfair advantage because you can drop they can drop it's all even they probably also have nidus canals or nidus worms in this map but whatever uh, and another point here is that the more different you make your missions from another the more obvious every difference have to be so in this case the big scary threat is Kerrigan and thus the map will show her all the time so you know exactly where she is and you will also see this which is the red path here which indicates where the next objective will be so you know where you want to go and you know where your base is obviously and when you start to move in any sort of direction just across you will run into these sort of whoops small bases and other defenses that you will be have to be taking out and the next point here is the unit intros come on little photoshop oh well so in basically every mission in StarCraft 2 you have a unit introduction you can basically choose from the level select menu that you will get after only I don't know three or four missions maybe you can choose if you want to have unit A or unit B and once you get your your new unit for the first time you will have this sort of mini mission 
which is basically showing you and teaching you uh, how to use the units. So you see this guy is talking and saying, oh, banshees, and they can be spotted by photon cannons. Um, so you basically use the the banshees to take out a few structures. Why didn't I kill the pile? Oh well. Um, so you have a mini mission that's on an extremely small map. You can go around the sides and fly around if you want to, but you really don't have to. And as you saw in the beginning here, the um, uh, where is it? Somewhere around here. Uh, the the basic direction of the unit first the stalker and the pylon and then there's it's all pointing to the northeast or whatever you want to call it so all the units is basically on a linear path and you don't have to fly around and look for it so this is just to show you the strength of the banshee and then once you've done have done that you will get a base and again in a few missions you will have bases flown in that you can land anywhere you want to but in this one it's uh, you basically get a finished base standing on the ground and the map itself expands boom there you have it um, this mission is one of my favorites actually because not only does it teach you to move your army like the dropship mission does it also teaches you how to move your base because as I'll be showing you shortly yeah here it is the wall of fire uh, basically what it does is kill everything from the left side and this line just moves across the battlefield I'm guessing that a lot of people who are interested in watching these kind of videos probably played Starcraft 2 already but I still mention a few of these things and again here just outside the base you can actually see it from uh, from the spawn here. I'm gonna go back. You can see the unit from the start here. So A, you can see that he's not really scary. B, you have a pretty decent army to begin with. And C, you you, you know from previous missions that moving out and scouting is a good thing. And if you didn't know that already, you, you can actually see the objective from the start. So uh, this is just a way to teach the player that exploration is a good thing if you didn't know already um, so you get your flying units you get your flying buildings and you have your early game um, and you also have unique maps I suppose another thing to note about this mission is that you are always capped at 200 supplies so you will never ever have to worry about building supply depots like far in front of the uh, the firewall here and for my next example here what I have is another objective based map and in this case it's about destroying the coolant towers um, and the basic part of the mission is that you have to kill the four coolant towers and when you do they will explode taking the entire Zerg base with them. Um, this is good in several ways because you will only have to kill one thing and you will not have to worry about running around the entire map looking for that last Zerg building and wonder why, why you can never find it. Um, in this case what I should have probably done was to run in and kill the coolant tower which you can see on the far left side here with big red thingies around it and then go back and kill the base because as you will see here the coolant tower explosion actually takes a while I don't remember it's 50 or 45 seconds or something um, 45 yeah so this is ample time to actually move your army out of the creep and just wait for the explosion uh, it might be a bit on the uh, too much side but what you could do was kill the coolant tower then run out and get the expansion here because again you will want to have to do something and not just wait sure you will be building things in the meanwhile because this is the extreme start of the map uh, but as you can see here once the coolant tower explodes the entire zerg base will be destroyed as well as the minerals because you can't build on the uh, the broken parts of the platform here 
What you will get instead is more pickup materials like minerals and gas. And this is still fairly early in the map. I don't know, but this is less than 10 minutes. Uh, so 400 gas and 400 minerals is actually quite a big deal. Uh, as well as having the extra expansion down there as well. Uh, so this part of the video will actually just be a quickie where I show off that you can choose between these two missions, either the Thor mission on Coral or the Medivac mission. And then you also have the extra option of playing through the Protoss. Uh, I don't know what to call it, campaign, maybe mini campaign. It's only three or four missions. But the option here with the Protoss is that you can choose to upgrade your base uh, if you want to, or if you're having trouble with the other missions. Uh, and the layout of the Protoss missions is actually very similar to the start of the Terran missions, except that you have a Zero Tool here, which is basically a hero unit from like the ones in Warcraft 3. Um, so you have your hero unit, which will eventually learn Blink. There you go. Um, it's obviously not made to really speed run this because the cooldown is so long but, uh, but you will have blink and at first you will start with one unit then you will get a handful of units then in the next map I think you will have a small base uh, and then in the last map you will have uh, basically more than 200 population because you will be keep getting units like a mothership and carriers and stuff like that and you will be fighting the uh, what's I don't know I can't remember what they're called but whatever so you start with zero tool then soon you will be getting there you go stalkers and then basically ramping it up just like the turn missions do so this was just another example of how to start off your player you have no minerals you have no supply you have no base but you have a handful of units um, given that this is later on in the game, it's more micro-intensive than the start of the Terran missions, but it's still pretty interesting in my opinion. So there you have it. Uh, a quick recap. The early game is important. Make sure that the player has something to do early. Again, I underlined this before. Uh, secondly, this uh, hub design thing keeps the missions from being extremely linear because you can choose between mission A and mission B or Protoss missions. Um, so this is what I call the hub design uh, because basically you have your hub here you can choose ABC then you move on you have ABC then you move on you have ABC so even though you can't tell like the perfect story where you know exactly at what point the player will be at at the separate missions you still have this space here between the different hubs where you can tell the story and this is also the reason why the first few missions are uh, like you can select between any of them they're just linear and using the level objectives here you can also keep the player um, basically scouting around the map and making sure that not every map has to be done from A to B maybe you have A and then you have B, C, B, C, D, and then at the final end you have another objective over here. So splitting your attention, basically what this means is that having the enemy attack across multiple paths or making the player move between the base and the units like in the lava mission and, and things like that. Making sure just don't keep the player waiting. Always provide something interesting for them to do. So that's basically it for this video. I hope you liked it, and if you didn't, well, let me know. I'll try to do something else for the next video, which will actually be on Dark Souls. So see you, and thanks for watching.